This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we turn now to Massachusetts, where students at Hampshire College have entered the 41st day of a sitting in the president's office, protesting what they fear may be the future closing of their school. In January, Hampshire College President Miriam Nelson announced a board of trustees and senior administrators would seek to merge the school with a, quote, strategic partner. The announcement was followed by staff layoffs in the school's development and admissions offices and news that the school would not be admitting a full class in the fall. This is Hampshire College student Olai Wildbor with the group Hamp Rise Up, which has been organizing the protests. We're fighting for transparency, better representation, and an educational system that listens to us and actually serves our best interests. It's really tragic, the fact that schools like this are closing down so rapidly. And now that we're here in the midst of this movement, I realize how important education is and how essential it is for these places to exist. Many of Hampshire College's faculty, students, alumni and staff have criticized President Miriam Nelson for her handling of the crisis, saying they were caught by surprise that the school was in financial trouble. Critics say it runs counter to Hampshire's unique mission as a progressive liberal arts college committed to social justice. We're joined now by three guests. Margaret Cerullo is a professor at Hampshire College, joining us in our New York studio, professor of sociology and feminist studies, where she's taught for 40 years. Her recent piece for The Nation is headline, The Unmaking of a College, Notes from Inside the Hampshire Runaway Train. We're also joined by Desta Kantav, a senior at Hampshire College, a member of the Hampshire Rise Up. And joining us via Skype is William Null, a trustee of Hampshire College, a partner in the law firm of Cuddy and Fetter. He's a Hampshire College alum, was a member of Hampshire's third entering class in 1972. We welcome you all. Let's begin uh, with Margaret Cerullo. Um, you have written this article. Um, uh, called The Unmaking of a College, notes from inside the Hampshire runaway train. What is happening? What's your understanding at Hampshire College? Well, it's taken us a, b a bit of time to figure out what's happening, because we've felt ourselves to be or experienced um, what's felt like a shock doctrine kind of attack. Everything happened extremely rapidly, starting on January 15th, when the first announcement was made that Hampshire was seeking a strategic partner and might not accept a freshman class. That news was absolutely devastating. It was confirmed on the 1st of February by a decision of the Board of Trustees. Dev devastating because Hampshire is tuition dependent. So um, failing to take in a class means automatically the, re un the necessity to cut 25 to 50 percent of the faculty and staff almost immediately. That was followed by an utterly bizarre letter to the um, early acceptance students, because the college had legal obligations to them. They'd already been accepted inviting them to come to Hampshire, but warning them that there would probably be no dining hall, no dorms, few faculty, and none of the services that one could usually expect from a liberal arts college, such as sports, clubs, study abroad office, or even on-campus jobs. So that was another cold water bath that said to us that not only was the college discouraging an entering class, but having seen that letter, it seemed to be a spur for exist all the rest of the students to transfer, get out as quickly as they possibly could, absolutely eliminating or virtually eliminating our revenue base. Well, William Null, you're a trustee of Hampshire College. Could you talk about uh, because uh, they. At least throughout the fall, the financial situation at Hampshire College, for anyone who was looking from the outside or even the faculty, was in good shape. So what happened uh, to suddenly uh, create uh, this financial crisis? Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we're having some problems. We're, we're having some problems with William Null. So uh, I will ask uh, uh, Desta, Desta Kantov, could you talk about uh, your reaction uh, and the reaction of the other students when you heard this sudden announcement? Um, yeah, so the announcement that first came out actually came out during winter break, and so a lot of the students weren't um, around. But um, once students returned from winter break, um, there was meetings with the students to talk about what was going on, and students um, reacted by—in um, protest, by um, 
on January 31st marching to the Dean of Students' office and uh, President Nelson's office in Cole Science Center. And the students have been occupying the President's office since then, and we occupied the Dean of Students' office for some time, and um, we conceded the Dean of Students' office after um, what we thought were making headway in negotiations about a list of demands that we created in our protest. And, um, and those, uh, those demands are um, radical transparency, shared governance, and overall equity, um, none of which have been met. But when it looked like things were going to be met, we stopped occupying the dean of students' office. But we are still in coal, and we've been there for, as you said, 41 days. Mm. Margaret Cerullo, can you tell us what's special about Hampshire College, for people who aren't familiar with it at all? I mean, you've been teaching there for 40 years. Well, Hampshire's an extraordinary place. I, um, it should be said, it was founded on the um, heels of the 1960s, the student movements, and it's always had a very explicit, upfront social justice mission. So we were the first college in the country to divest from South African apartheid, winning us a letter of recognition from Nelson Mandela from jail. We were the first college to divest from the Israeli occupation of Palestine in 2001. The entire college community voted against war with Afghanistan. So there's been a consistent history, both on and off campus. And as I, I met, said in my article, I think it would be hard to mention a progressive project or social, including Democracy Now!, or any social movement of the last 49 years that hasn't seen the active participation of students, faculty, alumni, and staff from Hampshire College. So I would say that at Hampshire, confront naming so social injustice and acting on it is part of the DNA. But the one other thing that I would like to say that's perhaps less well-known is that Hampshire has also been a refuge for political and intellectual refugees. Um, so, for example, um, Bhaskar Vashi, who was a Zimbabwean revolutionary imprisoned by the Rhodesian colonial government, who I wrote petitions about when I was a student in England 10 years later, was my colleague at Hampshire. Um, Youssef Latif—these are not political refugees—Youssef Latif taught there, and, of course, James Baldwin, and our truly beloved Iqbal Ahmad, um, who, again, had no place in the American university system after his political engagements during the Vietnam War and on um, in favor of um, the Palestinian people, had found a home at Hampshire and taught there for 15 years. So that—I mean, that's been an extraordinary— um, place, because the presence of those people has enormously enriched the educational experience for all of our students. I, I think we have William Null now. We lost him on Skype, but we have him on uh, by phone. Uh, William Null, as I said earlier, you are, uh, you're a trustee. What happened between the fall and then early January and February for such a drastic change in the announced position of the college on its finances to occur? Right. Well, I, w I want to say to begin with, I, I agree with Margaret Solo's uh, comments about how important Hampshire College is and, and the situation. I'm an alum. Um, uh, my spouse is an alum. My son is an alum. This is in uh, the DNA of, of I'm in my DNA, and most of the trustees on the board are also alums or parents of alums. So the mission of the college is a social justice uh, institution is incredibly important and is something that we're very focused on continuing. That's essential. The challenge here is um, that in the face of a $5 million deficit next year and $20 million over the next three years, Hampshire was faced with a situation of, of not being able to continue to sustain the reliance, 87 percent reliance on tuition room and board and reliance on donors' generosity and uh, in order to balance its budget. And what we wanted to do was to make it very clear and transparent to students that our first commitment was to them and graduating them and to the faculty and staff and continuing to keep the institution moving forward, not to bring in another class where we didn't have the funds, we were confident we didn't have the funds to continue and teach them out over a four-year period. So when we made the announcement in January, it was 
having confronted the fact that we had 1,400 students in 2014, we were down to 1,100 students in, in uh, 2018, 2019. And we were looking at a, at a continuing falling enrollment, which is a trend in the U.S., a demographic shift for, with less high school graduates. And the colleges in the Northeast in particular are competing for uh, these high school graduates. With the lower endowment, we don't have the money to essentially provide greater financial aid. And we focused our financial aid on trying to increase diversity at the school, which we've been successful at, and to try and get what we call thrivers, the students who can succeed at this very rigorous institution. I have to say that this is a terrible situation for Hampshire College to be in, that the loss of um, faculty and staff who are deeply dedicated to the mission and have dedicated their career is one of the worst things that, that uh, any of us have faced. And, uh, and the disruption for the students and their education is something that we'd all like to avoid. What we're looking to try and do is to steer the ship to a safe landing in a place where we can continue this important social justice mission. For years to come. Well, let me get comment from uh, Professor Margaret Cerullo, uh, your response to Bill Null, the well, trustee. Well, one of the things that's been the most puzzling to all of us is why the dire financial straits that the administration and trustees are now claiming faced Hampshire, that that um, information was not made known to Hampshire's extraordinarily loyal um, trustee—excuse uh, me, alumni who are, you, you can understandably, furious, because they weren't told um, that we were facing what's now called an existential crisis, and are being blamed for not being willing to be contributors. So that's, that's a great puzzle, for one. Um, we're, we're, we're not looking to blame faculty or staff. Last year, if you recall, there was a voluntary separation uh, agreements were entered into so that we could have early retirement for about 30 people. And at that point, we were looking at a $3 million deficit that was funded for a one-time dividend from one of the investments in our endowment. So we basically got by on that uh, deficit at that time, and that was discussed with faculty and staff. In fact, there were many people who sought to take advantage of that voluntary separation. The fact that Hampshire has year to year been in, in a challenging financial situation is considerably a result of its reliance, almost 90 percent, on tuition, room, and board. So there have been years— If I could interrupt, maybe, to I, tell— I want to bring Desta Kantav back into the conversation and ask yeah. what HAMP Rise Up's demands are right now. You met with the president. Yeah, so I would um, I would also like to clarify a little bit about our demands, because I think um, they kind of work in response to what this trustee is saying, um, which is we're, we're asking for overall transpar radical transparency, which um, none of this financial information was clear to members of the Hampshire community prior to January 15th. And if it was made uh, in any sort of way known, it was it was not to the degree at which we're being told about it now. Um, so everyone was kind of blindsided, I think, by um, the fact that all of a sudden the school could not go on without without not accepting an incoming class and without um, making these huge changes. We also asked for shared governance, which there are two, uh, there are or were two vacant seats on the board, and we asked that two students be elected onto that board. And we also asked, there's an options committee, which is a search committee for the uh, potential strategic partner that might be coming in to help us. And we asked for two elected students to be on that on that options committee. Two students were appointed by Miriam Nelson, but they were not elected by the students. And. Um, and there were, and we were declined to have two students added to the board of trustees that were elected. Um, and then our third overall equity was to protect programs like the James Baldwin Scholarship Program, Office of Accessibility Resources, the Cultural Center, and other sort of affinity spaces that have been prioritized. And in our last meeting around our demands with Miriam Nelson, uh, we have ten she seconds. was claiming. She was claiming to have met some of those demands, which she had not. And um, she even said that the overall equity demand, those affinity-based programs, 
were important to the college, but they were not non-negotiable in the strategic We're going to do part so two of really this discussion, and we're going to hear. post it online. Desta Kantav, senior at Hampshire College, member of Hampshire Rise Up, Margaret Cerullo, professor of sociology and feminist studies at Hampshire College, been there for 40 years, and Bill Knoll, Hampshire College trustee. Um, I'll be speaking at uh, in Denver at East High School on March 15th. That's Friday night at 7 o'clock. Check our website at democracynow.org. We also have an immediate job opening for a full-time junior systems administrator here in New York. Check democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Nermin Sheikh, Carla Wills, Tammy Warrenoff, Sam Alcock, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masood, David Prude, Sharina Nadura, Tay Maria Studio. I'm Amy Goodman, Juan Gonzalez.